Welcome back to another Motobob video and today Honda announced the details of their new 2022 CB300R which joins the CB125R, the CB650R and the CB1000R to complete their Neo Sports Cafe lineup. Now in the press release, Honda call it their lightweight superstar. So in this video, we'll go over all of the specs and details and we'll look at some of the competition to find out if it really is lightweight and if it really is a superstar. But before we get started, a massive thanks to my channel sponsors, Beeline Moto. They make this awesome little navigation device that's perfect for semi-retro bikes like this that don't have loads of tech, but you might want to add navigation to quickly get around town. They're super easy to install as well, just a couple of rubber bands around the handlebars and you're good to go. So there's a link in the description of this video where you can find out more as well as a link to my full review. But let's jump into the bike starting with the engine. It's still powered by a 286cc liquid cooled four valve single cylinder unit that makes 31 horsepower peak up at 9,000 RPM and 27 and a half newton meters of peak torque at 7,750. Those figures are marginally up on the previous model which was announced back in 2018, but I mean marginally. It's like half a horsepower and half a newton meter and they're produced about 500 RPM higher. Still, it's better than losing power as a result of the Euro 5 emissions regulations that it now has to meet. They've managed to maintain that performance and largely achieve the cleaner emissions by redesigning the underslung exhaust system with a new midsection with a larger catalyzer and a simpler design for the silencer. The other big change for the engine is that it now gets a slip assist clutch which essentially pulls itself together when you're on the throttle. This means fewer and lighter clutch springs can be used resulting in a lighter feel at the lever which can only be a good thing for a bike like this which is perfect for city riding but you might spend a lot of time feathering the clutch in traffic. Now that's the assist part, but the slip part of this new clutch, like any other slipper, allows it to hop on aggressive downshifts, which prevents the rear wheel from locking up. Now, given that this is a bike that's aimed at riders who could be less experienced just moving up from a 125, then again, it's a valuable new feature. Most of the chassis and the frame is the same, but the fork gets a very nice upgrade with the same 41 millimeter upside down Showa big piston separate function fork that you'll also find on its bigger sibling, the CB650R. The only notable difference is that it gets its own spring rate and damping settings to match the weight and performance of this smaller bike. Now, if you're not familiar with Showa's 41 millimeter upside down big piston separate function fork let me explain 41 mm be the girth upside down means the fatter part of the fork is above the thinner part as opposed to regular right way up forks generally this means less unspring weight which gives you better response and performance from the fork the previous gen cb300r already had an upside down fork but this one's big piston so the whole fork is used as the cartridge there's no internal cartridge and that means that more fork coil can flow through at lower pressures which again leads to better response especially at low speeds and then the separate function part means that instead of springs and damping in each fork leg one has the damping and one has the spring and this leads to less weight and again better response and performance basically in short you're getting much better cb650r forks on a smaller more affordable bike and that's a good thing brakes are the same and still look Looking good, so a radially mounted four pot Nissan caliper on a 310mm disc at the front, which ought to be more than enough stopping power for a fairly slender bike like this. And then you also get decent tech too, so that ABS is lean sensitive. It's got an inertial measurement unit, so that means that it's going to intervene appropriately if it detects that the bike's banked over. Obviously, mid corner, if you lose grip, that's not good. Now, you still get LED lighting all round, including the indicators. You still get the awesome styling, and you still get Get the LCD dash. The only other tweaks I can spot on the spec sheet are a new gear position indicator that should be a little easier to read. And then the seat, which sits at just under 800 mil, gets a new covering, which is said to be more comfortable. Now for me, this is one of the best looking bikes in this class. It doesn't look particularly inferior to some of the bigger bikes in the range because it feels like plenty of attention and care has gone into the styling. You've also got some decent color choices too. So matte gunpowder black is always gonna be nice and stealthy. And then you've still got Candy Chromosphere Red, but new for the 2022 models, there's Matte Pearl Agile Blue 
or pearl dusk yellow. So there's plenty of pop if you do fancy something a little louder. Now that's all well and good, but how does it stack up to the competition in 2022? Well, if I was buying a new bike in this class, I reckon I'd be looking at the Yamaha MT-03, BMW's G310R, or perhaps the KTM Duke 390. Now Honda say it's super lightweight, which on the face of it seems to be true at 144 kilograms wet, so fully loaded up with oil and coolant and fuel. And when you set it against the competition, it is indeed pretty damn light. It looks to be a good 20 kilograms less than the bikes that I mentioned, and you'll definitely feel that, especially at lower speeds. On the flip side, it is down on power versus those bikes, and quite a lot down on power. And that weight saving isn't enough to compensate in terms of power to weight ratio, so it certainly won't be the quickest of the bunch. So where does that leave it? Well, if you want the fastest naked bike that you can buy once you move up to an A2 license, then this ain't the one. There are obviously some better options out there, but if out and out performance isn't that big of a deal to you, and you want something super stylish, or if you're small or short and you want something very light and agile and easy to manage, then this one should still be on the shortlist of bikes to check out. As always, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below and which of the four bikes you'd choose if it was your cash. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.